Hey guys, Dylan here. Um, I'm here to bring you a really basic Blender tutorial. There are already some really good Blender tutorials out there and I highly recommend them as well. Um, if you go to blenderguru.com, uh, Andrew Price has some really good tutorials there. I learned a lot of my stuff from him. Um, but a lot of you guys have been asking me to make a Blender tutorial uh, of my own. Um, so here I am. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, I haven't really been uh, playing with Blender for very long. Um, uh, I started in December of 2011, so not even a year, um, but, uh, you know, um, I will show you what I know, uh, just for the sake of, um, of you guys, because you guys have been asking. Um, so hopefully this tutorial is helpful. Uh, it's just kind of for the uh, absolute beginner, people who have no idea what they're doing, no idea what to do once they open this file here, um, and all they see is, you know, a cube, a lamp, and a camera. Well. We're going to go ahead and start with this file real quick, and I'm going to show you the basic controls. If you've noticed already, I've been moving around quite freely. Um, the controls I've been using is middle mouse button to drag, um, and that drags around a focal point. Usually it's the center uh, by default. Um, notice I've also been panning a lot. Uh, this pan is just doing the same thing with the middle mouse, except you hold shift at the same time, and uh, that allows you to um, pan. And uh, overall, just the shift and the middle mouse button lets you move uh, pretty much anywhere, and you can also zoom in and out with the scroll button as well. So, um, yeah, those are just some basic controls. Some more navigation things are uh, you right click to select things, it's very important. Um, it's not left click, I don't know why they do that, but uh, it's right click. If you right click something, it'll, it'll select it. If you left click, uh, you'll notice you'll have this little cursor, this little red little target thing going around. That's called the cursor, um, and basically, you can use this cursor to do several different things. Um, honestly, it's not that important at the moment. You can deal without it, but uh, um, it is really useful in certain things that uh, that you can do with it. But uh, you don't really have to worry about it for now. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's see what else. Um, if you have a number pad, that's very important. Number pad is for navigation. Um, if you press the period key on a number pad, it goes to it uh, focuses on your, the selected item that you have, which is great because it also changes the focal point for your middle mouse button um, to that object. So you can uh, you can focus on things a lot better that way um, as well. So um, there's that, and there's also a zero on the number pad is the camera view, which is also very handy. I use it all the time. Um, you may have seen me do it uh, earlier on in this tutorial for fun. Camera view is also very important. And another thing, um, this is kind of a, a general thing, is if you hit five on the number pad, it gives you what's called an orthographical view. Um, so as you can see, depth perception is completely distorted now. If you notice, this is actually the closer plane, uh, the closer side of the plane of the grid, and that's actually the farther side, and you notice it doesn't really look like that. Um, basically what it does is it makes it so that if you look from the side of something, you'll actually see all of it uh, as as it is, as opposed to, you know, having some of it, you know, hidden because the other side's smaller. Um, it gets rid of the annoyingness, I should say, of depth perception. I sometimes work with this, sometimes I don't. Um, there, it really varies on uh, what I do. A lot of people like to work in orthographical, as I've seen online, um, just to get things to look a lot better. I personally like working with this, especially for animation, to get things um, a little bit more accurate as to how they're going to be rendered, because you're, you are going to render in normal, you know, uh, normal view, not orthographical view. So it depends on your taste. But that is there for you, uh, and uh, it's also very helpful when you when you combine it with wireframe. Wireframe is when you press the Z button, um, and you can pretty much see through any object. All you see are the wires, as you can see with this cube here. Um, if you if you hit five, then you'll you'll notice um, a lot of things can be done a lot easier. You can see through objects, and you can see that they match up really nicely, um, as if it was uh, two dimensional. So that's really great. Um, wireframe is really helpful. Um, and yeah, uh, just to get you guys into the swing of things, I'm just going to do a really short project with you guys. Um, basically, we're going to be building uh, a super simple object just with Blender, um, with uh, what's called edit mode. And I'll show you everything in a bit, but just doing these things, doing a small project, and doing the actions required to make this small project, I find is the best way to learn. So that's just what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to make some a few easy, easy peasy models. Uh, with you guys. Um, so if you want to follow along, you can. If you haven't downloaded Blender already, it's in the description below. Uh, Blender.org slash downloads, I believe it is, or if not, just it's in the description. Just click on the link. Um, but yeah, it is free. It is open source. So um, go ahead and try it if you haven't already. But yeah, so once you have Blender open and you have it here, um, 
go ahead and select the cube with, by right clicking and then we're going to press the tab button which brings it into edit mode which is the, this is the first time I've mentioned this um, edit mode is basically where you can select the vertices and edit the mesh however you want in other words you can you can drag it and stuff here's some more um, some more controls for you um, after you select something you can press either G for grab and move it around um, S for scale I can't scale a single point S for scale um, and then move that around uh, with your mouse and then um, and you right click to uh, to undo anything that you might have wanted and you left click to confirm um, that and I just controlled Z there to undo that but if you press something like you know scale or something and you realize oh I don't want to scale it anymore just right click and it'll, you'll get right out of that um, you can also press R for rotation and uh, those are the basic three uh, transformation controls so G S and R are, are, are really handy. And another thing you can do with R is you can uh, hit R and then you can hit R again, which gives you a free rotation, which looks a lot better in my opinion. It's a lot easier to move around, but you don't really have to know that for now. You can just, you can deal with R, um, but if you wanted to, you could also use RR and that gives you a little bit more freedom, um, a little bit more control. Um, anyway, so um, we're gonna go ahead and select these. The way I'm selecting multiple points is I'm holding shift and I'm right clicking multiple points and that um, that allows you to select uh, several different ones at the same time um, and what we're gonna do is uh, what did I say we're gonna make a cup yeah we're gonna make a cup um, cups are really easy um, and you might be like oh Dylan you know a cup that's what, what am I making a cup for well I'm gonna make a little bit more of an advanced cup nothing too simple um, but uh, something that I think you guys will all learn from it's really easy really really easy um, so if you just follow what I do, I think you'll, you'll be fine, and you'll be learning a lot of different controls uh, while we do this. So um, if you have trouble uh, following me, feel free to pause the video and watch it again or something like that or anything like that. Really, I'm just here to help you guys. So hey, so um, the first cup I made, I didn't really like it. It looked kind of like crap, and I feel like you guys would prefer to make something that actually looks good. So uh, let's uh, let's get started with uh, this much better cup that than the one that you have not seen and probably will never see. So here we go. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this cube, uh, and I'm going to add a circle. The way you add meshes is actually you go ahead and uh, you can either go to File, or sorry, sorry, you can go to Add, and then you have this little drop-down menu here, and you can go to Mesh, and then select here. I usually like to use the shortcut Shift A, which brings up the same menu just wherever your mouse was so it's a lot more convenient in my opinion but yeah just go under mesh and then go ahead and select circle <coughs> um, and we now we have a circle beautiful so I'm gonna go ahead and take this circle and press tab to go into edit mode uh, just like it was for um, the cube as you can see it's uh, it actually does not have a face right now so um, what you can do is press F and that'll give you a face for the bottom of your cup uh, this will be the bottom of your cup as you will soon see but uh, but yeah so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a tool that is really helpful and really versatile uh, it's called extrude the way you do that is you go ahead and press E and you'll see this little axis here that pops up by default which is usually the axis it, uh, is that's the normal of the face so it goes away from the face so we're gonna go ahead and use that axis for now because it's the one that we want to use I'm gonna go ahead and come up here. I'm gonna choose a height for my cup. By the way, I, I left clicked there uh, out of extrude to confirm the position. If you guys happen to, uh, let me go ahead and show you what what a lot of you guys might run into, because I know I did, and it's really annoying. Um, but basically, if you extrude and then you right click, usually what happens is you're like, okay, uh, I just undid the extrude, nothing, I didn't extrude, nothing's gonna happen, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude again. Oh, well, okay, that's fine and dandy. But actually, what happens is if whenever you right-click out of extrude, you don't undo the extrude. The extrude still happens, but the original plane that you copied is still there. So it just returns to the original position, so you, you can't see it anymore. But it is still there. And that's usually for, we're actually going to use this function, this part of the function, later on. But it is really annoying to deal with if you don't know that happens. So... I usually would undo after you right click from an extrude just to make sure that you don't have double vertices everywhere uh, that are completely unnecessary and hard to work with. So we're going to go ahead and extrude from here as many of you have already done. Oh, oh, oops. And then I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is uh, 
after I left click the general direction, I can actually edit it a little, adjust it a little bit more by pressing G and then pressing Z to move along the Z axis. And that'll, that's really nice. You can also do this with the X axis and the Y axis. And also for scaling, you can also scale along the Y axis or scale along the X axis. Uh, for this, I can't scale on the z-axis because it's flat, but you can do that for all of them as well. So just so you know, that's a good thing to know for precise movement. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and adjust a good height for my cup. I'm going to say, ooh, it should be around that that tall. And then, once you get a good height for your cup, you're going to go ahead and press S to scale the top a little bit outward. Because we, we all know cups are bigger at the top. So now we have this kind of cup-like shape. I'm actually going to make it mine a little bit taller. So the next thing we're going to do is this thing, exactly what I was telling you to avoid earlier, is the extrude right click tool thing, thing that you can do, whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, press E, I'm going to right click so that it's in the exact same position as you notice, I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to press S so I can scale inwards. And notice how the faces are still connected from the original, uh, the original loop around the cup. And then I'm going to left click to get a good, you know, lip. This is going to be the lip of the cup, by the way. Get a good uh, thickness for the cup. I could actually make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to extrude and then move it downwards so we can go into the cup. Notice how it goes outside of the cup. That's because the top is bigger than the bottom. So you can just go ahead and scale that inwards within the cup. And you can actually press Z and go into wireframe mode to look at exactly where you're bringing that. Now, um, a lot of cups, a lot of glasses, I should say, do have um, the little space at the bottom there, and you can emulate that if you want, or you can bring it all the way down. It's up to you. Uh, let's put it. I'm gonna put mine right around there, cause that, uh, around there, cause that feels, that feels good. That feels natural. Again, you know, 3D is, you know, 3D art is art, and art is not in any way objective. So you can make it however you want it to look like but this is just kind of how I want my cup to look like so that's a basic basic cup and you're like well Dylan that's not an advanced cup at all well it's not so we're gonna go ahead and make it a little bit more advanced so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a subdivision tool that uh, I really like it's really helpful for a lot of things basically you press control R and it brings up this purple ring here uh, this basically can cut any face with an edge in half you can select any face and then bring it over and you basically left click to make this edge appear and then you can actually move it around after that, after the fact. So you can adjust and then left click again and then that gives you a nice uh, edge in the middle of something. But I don't want it there. I'm going to go ahead, actually another thing you can do is you can scroll to make multiple rings uh, that are evenly divided. So if you wanted to do that you could as well but I'm not going to do that. What I want to do is I want to do one individual ring and then I want to move it up to around here and then I'm going to make another one control R and left click and then bring it up and then left click and I'll make another one and bring it up and then left click and make another one bring it up and then left click um, I'm, I think that's about good and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to right click here so it stays in the middle I'm going to do the same thing here I'm going to right click same thing here I'm going to right click now what I'm making is actually kind of like a plastic red cup type of deal. Uh, really easy, really simple, but it will look nice afterwards, after the fact. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to add another ring at the bottom, about equal distance, equal distance from the others. And I'm going to go and select these rings. Notice how I select these rings. Um, you might be wondering how I did that. What I did there was I just, I, I held, uh, instead of just right clicking something, I held Alt and then I right clicked a, an edge here and that will select the, all the connected vertices along that edge. You can do the same thing with vertical edges here. As you can see, it select all the vert vertical edges there. And you can do that for every ring. And then what I did is I shift alt clicked the so I can ha so I can alt click multiple rings, which is the same con concept as shift clicking uh, multiple points and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, sh I'm going to scale these inwards just a little bit to give you that ribbed look. See that kind of ribbed look for plastic cups and such. Now, this this works technically, but what you also could do is, if you wanted to be a little bit more accurate, you could press S and then press Shift Z. And I told you earlier that you could scale along different axes. Well, what else you could do 
is not scale along different axes, I should say. If you hold shift before the, the axis that you choose, then it will exclude that one and then scale along all the others. So I'm actually going to exclude the Z axis and only scale along the X and Y axes. And this will help you in a lot of different things. And particularly for this case, it will help me scale these ribs inwards only instead of also upwards or inwards uh, from the middle. Anyway, it's really subtle, but it'll help for this case. Uh, for different cases, it'll be a lot more prominent. But uh, yeah, so I just made a ribbed cup here. Really easy. It's actually a little shorter than I would have liked. So I could actually fix that by applying the things I just talked about. Shift Alt clicking these two rings and then just G and then Z it up a little bit. And I could probably also do that for everything here. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And if I wanted to add a, another rib here, I could do just do that with Control R and then scale it inwards a little bit. I don't have to do the the Shift Z thing because I'm only dealing with one, and that automatically doesn't scale on the Z axis. Um, and I could probably add another one just because I feel like it. Move that up a little bit, and then another one because that needs to go inwards. Pair with another one. And actually, I think that's a little bit too. Anyway, I'm gonna stop nitpicking this. I mean, it's just a cup after all. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this short, short tutorial. Uh, really basic stuff. This will help you get a, kind of a head start with using Blender because this is for the absolute beginner, as I said. And I know that when I started using Blender, I was just really confused about what to do, how to use the program, what to make, you know, that kind of stuff. So this should help a lot. I think it will give absolute beginners a good head start on how to use the program itself. There's a lot of features, obviously, that I didn't cover. There's a lot of different, like Blender is a huge program. It, it, it's open source and it's great. I love it. But it has a lot of capabilities that I don't even use yet. <laughs> so I didn't go into those, but this will give you a really good basic kind of jumping point to explore on your own. And you can look at the tutorials I post in the description as well. Um, there's a lot of the ones that I used back when I was first starting. I really like them. I would recommend them. You can look at whatever ones you want. Andrew Price has great tutorials on BlenderGuru.com, as I mentioned already. And there's a few other ones by uh, Blender Cookie and uh, Blender Nerd, I think, is another site that's really good. So the great thing about Blender is there's a good online community teaching this open source program to people. And I love it. It's great. I personally like it better than Maya and 3ds Max, but that's probably because I haven't really used Maya and 3ds Max very much. But yeah, so that's my cup, that's my tutorial, and this is uh, this is it. If you guys liked this tutorial, please let me know if you have any questions. If you guys didn't like this tutorial and thought that it, it wasn't adequate, and you know if you want to improve it in any way, this is one of my first ones. So uh, give me any kind of feedback you want. Leave it in the comments below. I will read every comment. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I really appreciate you guys watching any of my videos, really. So just let me know anything you want me to know in the comments below. And uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope to see you guys next time.